Hey everybody, Mike here. I am working on turning my flat panel Starlink dish into a completely flat phased array. If you haven't seen the other videos in my series, I'll put a link up here. Definitely take a look to find out how I got to this phase. But a recap of where we left off, I removed the plastic back shell off here. That went fairly well, except I damaged one of the power supplies or maybe both power supplies in this corner over here. And in this video, I'm gonna try to repair these, test it out, and also do a bunch of measurements uh, of positioning and placement on the board for anyone out there who wants to build their own mount like I'm doing. All right, all the details coming up. So in previous videos, I've been doing a lot of testing with my round flat panel dish, putting it on my car, driving around, making sure that the internet works uh, while in motion. I've now started this project, and uh, check out my previous videos if you haven't, to kind of do something similar but with the rectangle dish. My main reasoning is the rectangle dish doesn't have that solid metal backplate, so it's a little bit more low profile. It's smaller physically, it doesn't have as much surface area, and it uses less power than the round dish. So what I'm hoping is by stripping off the back plate and exposing the circuit board, you can see this is super, super thin. So once I get this working, repair the damage, um, confirm that this actually gets a good signal still in this shape, that the back plate wasn't doing anything as part of the RF signal. And once I get all that working, I'm going to work on an enclosure to kind of seal this up and make it waterproof and try to still keep it as thin as possible. But in this video, I'm gonna to try to repair this damage and give everyone, uh, give you all some measurements so that you get an idea of how thick it might have to be in order to be secure. Okay, so let's dive into the repair. So if you remember from my last video, I nicked with my cutting wheel a couple capacitors in these two power supplies in the bottom corner. And when I tested out the dish, it didn't work, completely dead. So I've been away for work over the past week, but what I did before I left is I found the uh, data sheets for both power supply controllers. And I've been doing some research on how they're supposed to work to help me in my diagnostics here. Thankfully, both power supplies are actually equipped with over current protection. So I think what's happened is my damage capacitors have shorted out the output of the power supply and that that basically is going to cause a short circuit for the power supply, which would normally be at risk of causing um, essentially burning up the power supply chip. But what I think's happened here is because of that over current protection, it's limited the current, which has protected the power supply chip, or at least I hope. So now I'm gonna do some probing to help confirm that and then desolder the damaged capacitors and hope that that you know, gets things working again. So for the, the ethernet connector to the board, I opened up the back casing and I just extracted, this is the bit that goes in the pole. This goes through the shaft and then to the board connector here. And then that's just a, a choke that goes on there. So I'm still using all of the kind of original connectors. So this is the proprietary connector there and it just slides in and plugs in here. And that seats pretty well. I know some people have trouble with that, uh, probably due to like manufacturing defects or tolerances, but uh, that clicked in there nicely. And now I'm gonna power up the board and probe around with the scope and see what I can see. And I'm just gonna plug that connector in there. All right, now before I power anything on, I just wanna show you the two sections. So this is the ethernet connector here. You can see it comes in and that comes pretty much directly into this big box. This is the Ethernet Magnetics. And that's a series of transformers that essentially separate the common mode voltage. So the, the DC coming over the line. 
and that comes out this way. And you can see this bank of capacitors here. That's these items here. Those are handling the, the raw voltage from the Ethernet connector. And then they feed into these, or the high side MOSFET here and the low side MOSFET here. And they're controlled by this small power supply uh, controller chip. They are what switch on and off rapidly to control the output voltage, which goes through this coil. So this part here is an ST Microelectronics L3751. It's a wide input switching power supply that can take up to 75 volts input and regulate it down to any voltage. And we'll find out what that is shortly. And then this output after the big coil feeds this filtered output with all these capacitors. And then that feeds into the second power supply here. And this power supply is actually replicated in multiple places on the board. Okay, so I have this probe set on 10 to one. I'm gonna probe this input voltage. And you can see the waveform here is switching on and off. So what I'm gonna to try to do first is remove this final capacitor here, the one that I nicked, which I think is short circuiting the output of this first power supply. Okay, and I'm actually gonna use two soldering irons to do this, because I don't have any tweezers or hot air rework. Okay, so there's the damaged capacitor. Okay, I just want to test continuity now between the two sides of these filter capacitors. And there's the last capacitor. Okay, so that's all of the damaged capacitors removed from here, here, and here, and here. So now I'm gonna go back to power it up and see if my power supplies have stabilized. All right, I just powered it on, uh, connected to the Wi-Fi, and I am now getting debug data from the dish. So it is alive. So those filter capacitors that got nicked, they were shorting out the output of the uh, primary power supply and that secondary power supply in that corner. Once I remove the capacitors, everything seems to be working okay now. Now, by removing the capacitors, I've reduced the kind of output capacity, the filtering of the power supply. So it may actually interfere with the operation of the dish, but at least it's enough to get it up and running. What I'm gonna do now, once I do some basic testing and my measurements, is I'm going to remove one more good capacitor so that I can actually measure the uh, how many microfarads it is, and then uh, order replacement parts. And then I'll be able to replace those damaged capacitors with some fresh ones. Then it should be back up and running exactly the way it was. Okay, so now for some measurements, what I'm gonna try to do is just hold it up in the air and kind of measure and call out the numbers. My main focus for this uh, teardown and disassembly is to actually take this super flat panel and encase it in something waterproof with 
something a bit more rugged to attach it, say, to the roof of a vehicle or strap it down to a backpack or just be able to throw it onto the ground and have it be waterproof and a bit more robust than a bare circuit board. What I'm going to start with is actually a measurement from the, the face here and note that it does have the vinyl coating on, so the thickness of that vinyl is included in my measurements. I'm going to do the face of here up to the top of the Ethernet magnetics. I'm going to do this all in metric. Uh, 14.5 millimeters. And then next I'm going to use the depth probe here to measure from the top of the magnetics down to the surface of the PCB. Yeah, 7.6 millimeters. So that's from the top of the magnetics down to the top of the PCB. So in editing, I'm going to do all the math and I'll put it down here somewhere. The overall thickness from the surface of the radiating part of Dishy to the back of the green PCB at this end should be right here. And over at this end, using the magnetics as the reference is, is right here. Okay, and the next set of measurements are all around the face of the board. So I wanna know where the key elements are. So where the ethernet connector is reference to the rest of the items, where the motor connector is. And one of the most important things is the original back uh, plastic enclosure had fingers that would go down and press against the board. And that provided rigidity for anything pressing on this side that it wouldn't bend the board back into the shell. So when I make my own enclosure, I want to keep fingers touching down on the board in all of those same places to provide that same support for any pressure on the face. So there's actually little marks on the board just where the fingers had kind of pressed against it. So what I'm going to do is measure from the sides or from some key reference point where all of those little finger touch points are so that when I do a kind of a 3D model of a new backplate, I can make sure that there are supports for the PCB in all the exact same places. So it's going to be tedious to actually show you how I do the measurements. So instead, I'm going to just take a picture of this flat and see if I can draw on the measurements onto the picture. And then you can just pause the video and, and kind of get all the details from there. Okay, so I'm going to put this down and put up the final measured footprint. Here you go. Okay, so I just got back in from outside. Uh, it's dark out, so I don't have any footage, but I tested it out, I plugged it in, and it worked. Here are the speed test results. Now, mind you, this was from a, just a quick setup. It wasn't kind of stationary for a long time to get its best signal, but this is just sitting flat. I actually used the original backplate kind of almost as like a table, but that's the dish sitting flat, pointing up at the sky with some obstructions, but I'm actually getting some signal with these speed results. So that's awesome. I'm so happy. I was so bummed uh, with my last video that I thought I completely broke it. But with just removing those caps, it's back up and running. Next steps are, like I said, I'm going to remove one more capacitor so I can measure it and order replacements to kind of fully uh, replace all the ones that I had to take off. And then building up a 3D model of this board so that I can start designing an enclosure to put it all together in a nice watertight enclosure for outdoor rugged use. All right, that's all for now. Thank you everyone for watching. See you next time.